Okay, so I have just finished To Fetch a Felon by uh, Jennifer Hawkins, which is the first book in a chatty corgi mystery series. I'm very biased because I am a corgi mom. Um, he's not here with me right now. His name's Dima. But uh, I thought this book was absolutely adorable. Um, it also did not have recipes with it, but we have just enough time right now that I'm going to try my hand at whipping up some scones while I talk at you about this book. Go ahead and add a third cup of sugar. So there's our first cup of flour. Wow. And I'm going to add a few more off camera so we can get through this. Okay, so we've added baking powder. Um, I had to substitute shortening because I actually didn't have enough butter to do this. That's that. Um, shout out to a friend from the Cozy Mystery Discord I'm in for recommending that. But so that's what we're going to do here is blend this until it's about the consistency of cornmeal. And then we're going to add our milk, and I'm putting vanilla extract in this recipe, because why not? I feel like that makes everything better. Okay. Seems close enough to me. This isn't maybe quite the ideal setup here. I think this is perhaps a bit too moist. Turn off the flour and see if that... Again, I really want to make biscuits. But, well... Okay, let's get this situated and then we can really talk about the book. I think that's done it. Alright, so our next task here is to... I basically just section this up. Mm. Still got some concerns that this is not the right consistency. So, our amateur sleuth in this book is Emma Reed, and she's leaving behind a very high stress life working in the London finance sector to go open a tea room in the little village of, I think we'd say it, Trevina in Cornwall. So if you're not familiar with the setting of Cornwall, it's like, you know, I'm actually not sure if it's considered part of Wales or if it's just its own thing at the very southern tip of it, um, if I recall correctly. You may know it from the BBC series Poldark, which I've watched a bit with my mom. We quite like that show. But anyway, Emma makes this move with her little corgi, Oliver. And here's the thing that's either going to make or break this book for you is I didn't realize when I checked this out that she actually has like a telepathic ability to speak with the quirky. Um, I thought that was really odd at first. I was like, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm feeling this, but I gave it a try and in the end, I ended up loving it. I don't know if it's because the way Hawkins writes, it came across a lot like I think my own corgi would sound. Only oh, these scone pieces are really uneven. <laughs> so this might be another flop. I'm not much of a baker or a cook. I'm just doing this for fun. Um, speaking of, there are many references to the Great British Bake Off in this book, which I'm a lot better at watching that than trying to recreate it. But yeah, it's just, it's little corgi dialogue. Sounds a lot like I imagine Dima thinks. Like they go to this, uh, I guess it's a bed of, and breakfast called the King's Rest that ends up being pretty important. It's where she stays at initially. He's just like, every time they go there, there's a continental breakfast with sausages. So he's like, oh, hooray, sausages. <laughs> Emma, let's go get a sausage, Emma. I think you need a plate of fish. It's like, you know, they love food. 
That's so sweet, and it's so cute. And it was an interesting angle I've not seen before, and like, granted I don't read very many paranormal cozies, but she has this little agent who can smell like who's been there and can smell where people have been. And of course, she can't justify this to anyone else by saying, well, you know, my dog told me. So you see her gather a lot of information via Oliver and she sort of has to figure out ways to retroactively prove it. So it's not, I, I mean, there's a couple places. Was, he can also overhear conversations, which is interesting. I'm not trying to think too hard about the mechanics of that. But it's like, is it cheating? I'm not sure. It was, it was fun, whatever it is. Okay, um, let's give this a go. Sticking them in the oven at 375 for probably 16 minutes. Okay, so those are in the oven. And I took a moment to go ahead and make what is not the most aesthetically pleasing tea sandwich, because I do need to eat before class. So the book starts out with her moving to Trevena, where she visited often with her family as a kid. Oh, and here comes Linus to try and have a bit of our tea. We may have to go up in a second. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's about to have to go up. He wants the sandwich. <laughs> so as she's walking her dog, Oliver, like her first day there, she's still trying to find a place to move into. She does end up finding a very cute little cottage. She has an altercation with this lady who's less than pleasant. At least, you know, at first, you know, unless you're close to her. If you don't want any spoilers, maybe skip past this. I know we all have different thresholds for that, but, um, I really like that in cozies a lot of times you see people who are just so terribly awful that they died. It's like, pff, all right. And you think that's how this will be at first, but as the book goes on, you find out she's one of those people that really embodies the fact that kindness and niceness aren't the same thing. She made life difficult for a lot of people, but she's very fiercely protective of those that she loved, and she was not a bad person at the end of the day. <laughs> I have to edit out some chewing. But this altercation happens because Oliver spies a fox in her prized rose garden. And, of course, he naturally wants to go investigate. If you have a corgi or have ever spent much time around one, you'll know that they will definitely pursue something like that. And I also think it's cute that in the book, he does a lot of hurting of people. He's like, no, 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 you can't go over there. And he starts nipping at their ankles. And that's very much what corgis do. Um, mine does that to me. It's like it's bedtime. He will like try to herd everyone off to sleep. It's, it's really cute. But, um, as it so happens, this lady, Victoria Roberts, also happens to own the building that Emma's kind of scoping out to open her new tea shop in, which will be important later. Um, so Victoria chases her off. She winds up meeting who you see is probably going to be like her new bestie in town, Jenny who runs the local fish shop, eh, sorry, fish and chips shop, and it's called the Town Fryer, which I thought was quite clever. So anyway, while um, Emma and Jenny are chatting and meeting each other at her fish shop, they overhear like a really heated argument between Victoria, her nephew, and a good friend of hers. And in the course of this, Emma ends up learning that Victoria's 
rumored to have been involved in the disappearance of a man who once ran Penhallows, which is the tea shop uh, Emma essentially wants to reopen. There's a few other characters in this book you'll meet. Um, the family that runs the bed and breakfast, the King's Rest. I believe it's Angelique, Daniel, and their grown daughter, Pearl. Uh, it says they're, or at least the parents are immigrants from somewhere in the Caribbean, but also very much Cornish. Um, you'll also meet Maggie Trenwith, the realtor who helps Emma get her cottage, and she's very tied up in the murderous events of the book. I did appreciate that in spite of the protagonist moving there to open up her own business, the body wasn't found there or found near there or threatened the opening of it in any profound way. So it was nice to see that like almost happen, but not. Okay, scones should be done now. Okay, we've got our scone now. I just picked one up. Um, this is the smallest one. I think some of them I cut a bit too large and they've probably not cooked quite right. I believe the debate is between the Cornish and the Welsh and the rest of England as to whether cream or jam goes on the first layer. I really don't understand. Uh, yeah, this is not the right texture. I'm going to sob. Oh, clotted cream is not easy to come by here. For those of you who've not had it, um, it's like if whipped cream was just butter. It's not how that's supposed to look. It's a bit granular. Ah oh, well, can't be helped. Bit of lemon curd. Mm. So, I think maybe my dough was not quite dry enough. It's definitely not the super crumbly sort of scone you get like at Starbucks. But, you know, I, I don't dislike that. Unfortunately, yeah, my clotted cream has unclotted itself. I'd love to try this again with a new jar of the cream. And maybe some of the add-ins to the scones that are mentioned in the book. Because, uh, interestingly, her tea room is actually not open by the end of the book, but there's an arrangement worked out where she is baking and serving tea and everything. I'll just leave that for you to find if you choose to read it. Again, the whole talking to your dog thing, it might be a bit over the top for a lot of readers, but if you give it a chance, you may end up really loving it like I did. I thought this was very well written. It certainly feels very cozy, especially if, you know, you're a bit of an anglophile. Um, there were some plot holes. The mystery wasn't... I thought it was neither spectacular nor bad. Um, I thought it could have been tied up a little bit better, but I'm not holding that against it too much. To my knowledge, there are two more out in the series right now. I can't think of the title of either one. I'm just going to edit them in over here. But yeah, I can't really think of much else. I'll just leave you with the fact that since it's a chatty corgi mystery, non-corgi owners may not realize that those dogs make some fantastically weird sounds. I think if you were going to choose a dog breed to have communicate with its owner like this, it's the one to do because uh, they make like Minecraft villager sounds a lot. They'll be like, mah, 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 mah. <laughs> it's just go Google it. You're not going to regret it. It was 30 seconds of your day that'll just make you happy. That's everything. I think the next book I'm going to start is either going to be a game of cones, which is number two in the Ice Cream Shop Mystery series. It's by Abby Collette. 
or I happened upon a used copy of, um, I think it's Murder Past Due. It's the first in the uh, Cat in the Stack series by Miranda James. All right, later.